who are on the line tonight. I pray that God would just grant us great peace uh, and great joy and has blessed us all day long. I want to thank uh, Minister Edwards for her introduction. I want to thank, um, I, I guess Mr. McClatt, I thought she was a host, but whoever's, on, whoever's in control of the soundboard tonight, thank you for being on tonight as well. Uh, we're here tonight, and um, I want to, in my absence yesterday, I want to thank Minister Edwards for her powerful word that, that actually contained not only scriptural support, but also historical perspective, and I'm grateful for it. And I just want to tell the ministers who are on and others who are not on, I want to thank you for your diligence and your preparation as we have encountered and engaged in this, this um, expectation moment. It's not mine, it's ours. God gave it to St. Peter, uh, and God has allowed us to share it with each other, but also share it with others, and also allow each of us to bear uh, the responsibility of bringing this moment uh, to pass. So all of us have been instruments. I want to thank the ministers for that. I want to thank all of the members uh, for your willingness to participate each night. We have uh, continually have on between the phone line and Zoom line a good number of people. I think we average about 70 people between the two of them. Um, and, and let me pause and do a station break. I want some of y'all who are on the phone who got cameras and who got phones and laptops not to be afraid to come to Zoom. It's okay. It's not that difficult once you get the hang of it. So just, I know some of y'all, I look at the phone line, I see who's on there. Some of y'all, I know y'all got cameras. I mean, you got phones and got laptops and iPads. I've seen you with them. So it's okay to give Zoom a try, but we're having a good time, both of these methods, these platforms. And so I'm grateful tonight for your presence. We're going back to Mark Chapter 5. We were in Mark Chapter 5 um, on, on, on Wednesday. Uh, yeah, on Wednesday, and the Lord wanted me to come back and, and, and delve out at some other uh, issues, uh, some other points, some other practical applications that we have for our lives. We remember Mark chapter 5, particularly verse 21. We started off with a man named Jairus. Jairus had a daughter uh, who was sick unto death, and we learned later that she was 12 years old. So he had had a daughter who he, he had enjoyed for 12 years. For 12 years, he had enjoyed his daughter. But suddenly, this daughter, whom he loved, obviously, because she came to Jesus and with intensity, uh, with the desire for her healing, uh, suddenly, this, this, this man's situation changed. And I want to look at the, the dichotomy between the two um, miracles that we see here in this text tonight. Jairus had a daughter for 12 years who suddenly became sick unto death. Jairus came to Jesus and, and sought Jesus, and Jesus did respond to his seeking him by saying, I will go with you. In the process of going from from where Jesus was to Jairus' house, the Bible lets us know, beginning of verse 25, that Jesus had an encounter with someone else. Let me pause parenthetically to remind us of this. Mark included in his gospel account of Christ more miracles than any other gospel um, gospel writer. The reason was not that the others didn't see the miracles, because Mark was a traveling companion of Peter, which is where he got his message, his, his, his content from. But the reason why Mark included so many miracles is it's because Mark wanted his readers to know who are Roman Christians who are being persecuted and prosecuted because of their faith in Jesus Christ. He wanted them to know that Jesus was an active Savior. Now, this is a great example here because Jesus is going on his way to do a miracle, and in the process of going to do a miracle, he does a miracle. I want us to understand in this context that the Lord that we serve now is the same God who was here traveling throughout Galilee and Judea and the Jerusalem area. And, but I want us to also understand this reality. During Jesus' earthly ministry, he was hindered um, by space and time because he had taken on the form of a servant. Because he had taken on himself the form of a servant, he was limited because he had on a, a fleshly body. We must understand now that the Lord is not limited. We don't have to say, well, the Lord did a miracle yesterday. He's taken off the day. The power of our God is, 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 is immaculate. It's in, 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 is overwhelming. It's everywhere. It's great. It's powerful. It's, it's, it's so complete that as a children of God, we must understand that God is not limited at all by anything. His power and his sovereignty is unmatched. Now, let's go back to our text. So as Jesus was going from one place to another to do a miracle, because the man had come to him with a posture of humbleness, a posture of intensity, and a posture of belief, this Jesus runs into this woman. And let's look at this woman for a second. Verse 25 says, she was a certain woman, and she had had an issue of blood 12 years. Again, for 12 years, this man desired to enjoy his daughter. For 12 years, this woman had had a miserable life because the Bible lets us know that in this issue of blood, this sickness that she had, verse 26 says, that during this time, she had suffered many things of many physicians and spent all that she had. It was nothing better but grew worse. Let me do it again. One hand, man had enjoyed his daughter for 12 years. On the other hand, this woman had been sick for 12 years and now found herself bankrupt because her illness had made her bankrupt. Y'all, some of us know how sickness can be. Sickness can take all that you have. 
this woman had a long-standing issue that bankrupted her, probably not just financially, but also emotionally. I want us to I want to put this in in a, in a frame tonight because I want us to understand that both of these situations are 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 not neither one of these situations about this unique. This is how life can be. Some of us everything's going good and suddenly it's not. There's some of us that struggle with a long time. But what I want to say encouragingly or in our expectation moment tonight is understand this that neither one of these situations is outside of God's ability to change. Jesus can change the problem that popped up and Jesus can change the problem that's been there. All it requires is our positioning to experience the power of God. Now, let's look at this very closely. The woman had an issue of blood for years. She had lost all that she had, had, suffered many things, had gone to doctors, had been. And I want, to be, I, want, I want to paint a picture here. The Lord just told me this. She had gone to doctors hoping for a solution, hoping for a cure, hoping at least for a prescription that put away the pain, but she could not find. In other words, think about this. She went to the doctor and waited on the doctor to run his test. He ran his test. He came back to nothing I could do. She went to another doctor, a specialist. The specialist said, hey, I think I can help you. And at the end of the specialist consultation, he says, I don't know what's going on. He had had that kind of emotional roller coaster ride in her life. But here she is in verse 27, coming to Jesus. The Bible says, when she had heard of Jesus. I love this because the Bible lets us know that that the hearing of Jesus can be transformed. The Bible says that faith comes by what? Hearing. And hearing the word of God. I want to take another uh, a commercial break and let us know. This is why it's important for us as Christians to share the word of God with others. Because as we share the word of God, as we read, and I'm talking about the word of God. I'm not talking about some, some, some thoughts we might have. I'm talking about the word of God. As we share the word of God, it allows individuals who don't know the Lord to come to a place where they can have a relationship with God themselves because they have heard the word. How many times have you heard a scripture and you wanted to read it yourself and you went back and read it yourself because it sounded it, it was good? The Bible says, oh, taste and see the Lord is good. The word of God is good. And if we share the word of God, we put people in a position to have their own encounter with the Lord. I had this conversation with a good friend today about the importance of, of not being selfish with our relationships. If you know somebody can help somebody, else connect them. Don't don't try to be in the way. But I'm more I'm more uh, intense about this resort. Sometimes we are, we we have the Lord and we don't want to share the Lord. Tell the Lord to somebody. Tell the Lord. Tell somebody else how good the Lord has been to you, and then tell them that they can have a relationship with the Lord as well. Tell them. Tell them. I remember uh, when I was um, in, in college and after I played, um, a whole lot of people didn't want to play in the line because we, some people wanted to just hold on to just being the newbies on the block. We want to hold on to being a frat. We want to make it real exclusive. And I told them, I said, that if we do that, the frat, the chapter would die. Some of us don't understand. we got to share Christ to the world because if not, the body of Christ will get frail. We are, our job is to share Christ with the dying world, not to keep it to ourselves, not to, to sit on it, not to, to keep it an exclusive fraternity. The Bible says that Jesus, that for God so loved the word, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. The Bible says God so loved the world. Let me go to the book of Acts. Acts says this. The reality is that Jesus uh, desired by the power of the Holy, gave the Holy Spirit so that the gospel could be shared. So who are we to hold back on the gospel? This woman heard about Jesus. Let, let us be the, the conduits. Let us be the vessels, the instruments, so somebody else can do what? Hear about the Lord. Let's go to verse 20, um, 27 a little further. The Bible says she heard of Jesus. And when she heard about him, and then she heard he was near, the Bible says, she came in the press behind and touched his garment. Now, I, you know, and I know we've all seen this story 1,100 times, but I, I'm always fascinated at what caused her to, to expect that a simple touch would change her life. What made her? Because she had been through a lot. She had lost a lot. She had, she had been devastated by life for 12 years. But yet the Bible says that she came. In the posture, in her mind, had decided that if I can just touch Jesus' clothes, this man's clothes, I shall be whole. She didn't say if I can touch Jesus' clothes, I feel better, or my symptoms will dissipate. She had a completely in, inclusive uh, proposition in her mind. If I can just touch the hem of Jesus' garments, my problem would be solved. My issues would be over. My life would change. My circumstances would be would be re- renewed. My 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 doubts would be allayed. All these things would happen in my life if I could simply touch the hem of his garment. I'm gonna call a time out right here. I I I I want us to hold on to this particular scripture for just a minute because this woman has something unfortunately that unfortunately that many of us in Christ don't enjoy. We have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And this lady didn't have a previous, pre-existing relationship. I want to be clear. 
We believe that Jesus died for us and God raised him from the dead. This lady had not the benefit of that because Jesus' earthly ministry had not yet ended. Yet this woman had a powerful expectation because it is clear that she felt that if she could just touch Jesus' garment, her life would be changed. Now, this is why this is important. Let me tell you why this is important. We have to add to our, our portfolio of belief. Not only did Jesus die for our sins, and that God raised you from the dead. But we also have to ask our portfolio of beliefs that there's nothing impossible for God. There's no, there's no situation and there's no circumstance in which God cannot change our outcome of our lives. We, 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 we rest assured of our eternal life, but God wants us to rest assured in the abundance of our daily life. Why? Because of his wonderful power and his great goodness. In other words, the Bible says that Jesus, that the Lord uh, allows his love to flow to us, his overwhelming uh, love to flow to us, for us, to, to propel us, to cause us to overcome problems. But some of us are, con- are content to not having that level of belief. We're simply content to lay in the bed. We're content to just go through the motions. But God wants us to have expectation that he can do great and powerful things in our lives. Some of us lack the faith in it, but some of us just lack the energy to, to, that it takes to to get to that point. Now, let's look at what it takes to get to this place. She said in her mind, if I can touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. That's what she said. She, did, she lacked the relationship, but she had expectations. Let us add expectations to our relationship with God. We got relationship. Let us add expectations. Can we go back to the tape for a moment? The Bible says that she said, if I may touch the heel of his garment, um, I, I'll be made whole. But let me look at verse um, 27. Let's put 27 and 28 together, rather. On the one hand, she touched Jesus' touched Jesus' garment. Verse 28, she had decided what would already happen. She had expectations. The Bible says that straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. Let me pause here because I want to put this in some a level of order. She did what it took to get what she thought would change her situation. The Bible says earlier in verse 24 that there was a crowd of people around Jesus. She did not allow the crowd to prohibit her because she felt strong enough that if she could touch the hem of Jesus' garment, her life would be changed. She did not allow the crowd to stop her. She did not allow anything to stop her. And I want to pause parenthetically and go back and and, and pull this together. The reality is too many times we as Christians who have the relationship with God allow external distractions or even internal doubts to prohibit us from getting and doing what it takes to have an encounter with the Lord, to have contact with the Lord. Now, here's the thing. Her contact was physical. Our contact will be spiritual. But the reality is sometimes we allow external factors and internal doubts to keep us from going there. Let me, let me put, see if I can put this in context. Sometimes we allow all the things going on in the world. Say, I, I blow this can. He's he not going to be able to give me this new job. He's not going to be able to give me um, um, my health back. He's not going to be able to give me this. There's too much going on. Too many other people need help. I, I can't expect God to do that for me. And the and reason why I can talk first about this is because there was a period of time when I was sick, I felt this way. I'm not worthy. But here's the thing. Worthy doesn't have anything to do with it. God's grace is what it takes to get what God wants for us. In other words, it's his decision. If God decides to do it, he will do it. And so our position, our, our role, rather, is to position ourselves so that we can experience whatever God has for us. I said this before. I had decided at one point that when I was sick, that the Lord heal me if he just kept my heart pumping, whatever he decided to do, I was going to accept it because either way, I was a beneficiary of his grace. I even said if God, God called me home, I, even that is his, is, his, is his call, and it's the best call there is because it's his call. We have to get push aside some of the things that cause us to doubt God or doubt that God will do it or doubt that God will do it for us. And that's what the biggest issue is. Sometimes we don't doubt that God can do it. We doubt that God will do it. I want us to understand that we have to have the same posture this woman. She pressed through the crowd. We got to press through the doubt. She pressed through the crowd. We got to press through all of the, the negative reports that the world gives daily. I, I mean, I remember the day I was reading some articles. I read 22 articles this morning, and 21 of them were negative. This is the world in which we live. But the reality is, as we are in this world, we are not of this world, and we must subscribe to a different newspaper. We might we should subscribe to AJC, CNN, MSNBC. I mean, we can listen to it, but don't subscribe to it. That don't, don't let that be the basis of your belief. We need to subscribe to the B-I-B-L-E and, and online, uh, J-E-E-J-E-S-U-S at G-O-D dot com. That needs to be the method and the source of our information that causes us to look up and not down. This woman didn't have the relationship, but she had expectations. Let us add expectations to our uh, to our relationship. Let me go this a little bit further. She, her situation was changed.
change in verse 29. The Bible says the fountain of her blood was dried up. The issue that she had was, was healed. And she felt that healing immediately in her body. And she knew that she was healed of that sickness, that disease, that issue that she had. Now, I've always found it interesting that when Jesus, this happened, that Jesus um, turned to her and said, who touched my clothes? Two things was interesting. Uh, I always find it fascinating that Jesus, that Jesus could tell that he was touched. And I also find it fascinating that Jesus didn't know who touched him. But I realized that Jesus didn't do that for himself. He did that for us because he wants us to understand that he is as knowledgeable about our circumstances. And he also wants us to know, while he's knowledgeable about, about them, he wants us to have the boldness to come to him for the transformation. In other words, sometimes we sit and say, well, God knows my situation, but God wants us to call it out. He wants us to say it, and then he wants us to testify about it once he's brought us through. Now, again, this may be a sticking point, but I want us to go just a little bit further with this, this text so that we can see the why. In other words, when God, when you have a problem, talk to God about it. We're so quick. We're so easy to call a thousand people and tell them what's our problem. We're so quick to post, here's my problem. But God wants us to make him our number one um, person that we talk to. He wants to be the source of our consultation. The reality is you can talk to a lot of people, but can't nobody change the situation but the Lord. So let's start off with the Lord and so that our conversation will be to others will be as a result of what the Lord has done. So this woman was healed. Jesus knew in himself, verse 30, that virtue had gone out of him. He turned around and said, who touched my clothes? His disciples, of course, didn't understand what was going on because they began to have this conversation. Uh, how would we know who touched you? There's just a whole lot of folk around. In Jesus, verse 32, this is why I know Jesus knew who it was. He looked around about to see her. They had done this thing. Jesus wasn't just looking around the crowd. Jesus knew who did it. He just wanted everybody to have their attention on what was going on. The woman was fearing and trembling because she knew she'd been healed, and she fell down before him and told him all the truth. Two things I'm going to be finished tonight. First of all, this lady... Uh, Jesus did what he did in order that she would know it was know that he desired more than just to heal her. He desired a relationship with her. Because the next thing that Jesus says is that thy faith in me, behold, go in peace and behold of thy plague. Jesus wasn't just speaking to her, her physical healing. Jesus was speaking to her spiritual transformation, her spiritual condition. Now, not only would she know that Jesus is a healer, but now she know that Jesus was a soul fixer, a heart fixer, and a mind regulator. This is why it was important that, that this encounter took place, that Jesus asked the question. Jesus wants us to take a stand and declare our situation to him. He wants us to come to him like that woman did, but he also needs to use us so that, so that we will know who he is. In other words, I've said this before, you don't know what the Lord can do until the Lord brings you through it, until the Lord does it for your life. You don't know that he can, he can heal your body until he heals you. You don't know that he can bring your job back because he's, he's an HIV specialist. You don't know that he can get you off a of drug. He's a drug counselor. You just take the taste. But you don't know that he can handle drinking or, or lying or whatever your other issues are. We don't know that. We don't know that God can do all things until we try it. And God wants us to, as we try, guess what? It gives us a testimony. Now, the next reason I think that God did this and, and made the, made Jesus did this and had this encounter and made sure that it was clear what had taken place is because of Jairus. I love this part right here. Let me, let me walk through this real stuff because I get excited. Jesus needed Jairus to see and others to see what his capabilities were. The Bible says in verse 24 that, 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 that um, Jairus, after he had, um, excuse me, after Jesus had responded by he was going with Jairus, the next thing we hear about Jairus is when they say, your daughter's dead. When they told Jairus, your daughter's dead, Jesus didn't stop and say, oh, no, it's, it's terrible. Jesus said, be not afraid, only believe. In other words, this indication was that Jesus was aware that when Jairus had come to him in the first place and bowed down at his feet, that he believed. And Jesus said, I want you to keep on believing, but I want you to base your belief now, not just on how you came to me. I want you to base your belief on what you saw me do. In other words, Jesus knew it was important for this woman to, to, to be healed, but he also knew it was important that others knew of her healing, not so that he could get pats on the back, but so that others who saw him could be strengthened in their belief. Can I say this right here? When we see, it's important for us when God does something for us, that we be are willing to share what God has done. I don't care what it is. You might say, well, it ain't that much. Guess what? Somebody else is going through that same situation. And, when, and because of that, you need to share what God has done. I told somebody other day, I said, I know you might be tired of my testimony, but I said, I've got to say this. Why? Because somebody else may be going through something that seems impossible, and no matter how impossible it looks, it's important that we share it so somebody else can know the great capacity that God has to change our lives. Jairus 
was weary, I'm sure, from the journey. I'm sure he was a little impatient because Jesus had to stop. But Jesus let him know, don't worry about time. Just only believe. Keep on believing. Only believe me. Keep on believing. Let the belief that propel you to me be the belief that propels you to a posture in order that you can experience my power in your life. I see the Lord doing miracles during this season, and I see him sustaining us by his power. And we need to tell it. Mother Vaughn Essence posts almost every other day a post about if the Lord has done these, this or that for you, say amen. I say amen every day, and I want somebody else to be willing to tell somebody what the Lord has done in your life. If you came into this COVID not worried about how you're going to make it, and yet you've made it, tell somebody, you know, the Lord has kept me during COVID. If you've been on quarantine and you said, well, I don't know if my job will last, your job still lasts, tell, tell somebody, I still made it. The Lord brought me through. Even if you lost your job and you still, if you're still pushing ahead, guess what? You can tell God has kept me by his power. That means that somebody else can see the Lord and keep on believing. I believe without a doubt that this season for us was for our strength and our faith to be developed. And this is what it's going to take. It's going to take humility. It's going to take an intention to reach God. It's going to take a, a consistency of belief. It's also going to take, like this woman demonstrated, an expectation. And it's also going to take our willingness to declare what the Lord has done. When the Lord, when Jesus said, who did it? This lady had to come clean. Why? Because God wanted her to come clean so that others would know what happened. In other words, her miracle wasn't an obvious one, but the Lord made it obvious, and she made it obvious by letting them know what the Lord had done. Let us be these people. Let us be like Jairus. Let us be like this woman whose name is not called, but we know she started off sick. Let us be like this, these people and declare what the Lord has done. Let us be like these people and bow before the Lord in humility. Let us be like these two people and stand strong in the Lord. Let us be like these two people and come to the Lord believing that it's he and only he that can change our situation. And when that happens, I believe that we'll see the miraculous power of our lives. I believe that we're going to have some diarist moments, and I believe we're going to have some woman with the issue of blood moments. I believe we're going to see the mighty power of God unleashed in our lives and in the lives of believers all around us as we share the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ with the dying world. I'm grateful tonight for just a few verses. I'm grateful for your time, these 24 minutes that God has given us together. And I want us to hold on to these verses today. When you're feeling doubtful, remember that God is able to bring you through. When you're feeling a little weak, remember what God is capable of doing. If something sudden comes up, know that God can handle a sudden problem. And if you've been wrestling with something for a long time, know that God can handle something you've been wrestling with a long time. Either way, it's best put in the hands of the Lord. I'm going to call time out on y'all tonight, and we're going to stop tonight. But I love each of you. I pray that God will richly bless all of us today as we prepare for all that he has done. Let me do one more um, announcement. Let us remember that it's very important for us that next Saturday, a week from tomorrow, we will be starting our Fun with the Lord Youth Bible Study on Saturdays from 2 to 4. The reason why we're asking for you to call your information into the church is so that we can make sure that we prepare the material, which we will get to you. If you can't get to it, we're going to drop it off to you so that we can have a – that our kids can learn more about the Lord during this season. It's unfair for us to just call in ourselves and get strong and let our kids get weaker. We see that our children are under attack. We see it, don't we? And because we see it, let us do our part so they may know the Lord in the free part of their sins and have their own relationship with God so they can be strengthened. I don't care if it's your child, your grandchild, your great-grandchild, niece, nephew, uncle, cousin, neighbor, kids, whatever. I'm telling one of my neighbor kids today, hey, I want you to call in because as we give them the word of the Lord, they are in, they will be strengthened beyond measure, and they will be able to stand in a cruel, dying, and unjust, oppressive world. Let us remember to do that. Call the church. All you got to do is leave your name, the name of the kids, and some, and some phone numbers. We're going to put together a spreadsheet so this coming week we will be able to reach out to all of the youth that are connected with St. Peter. I ain't going to say it's just because you. I don't want nobody to say, well, it's just the St. Peter children. This for any child. They only had to be in Atlanta. How about that? Because we're doing it on Zoom. They, they, they can live anywhere. It, they can, as long as they can get a, a, on the phone, on Zoom, they can be a part of this Bible study. God is going to do something special, and I want all of our kids to be a part. God bless you tonight. Let us pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, we love you, we thank you, and we praise you for your great power in, in situations that arise suddenly, and your great power in situations that we struggle with for a long time. God, I pray that you bless all of the believers tonight that are on Zoom and all that are on the phone line. I pray, God, that you would just continue to grant us your grace and the mercy that you have promised us and that you give to us fresh daily. I pray special blessings upon those who signed in tonight. I pray that you bless their homes, their families, bless all that they have. Give us, give all of us peace. Give us patience. Give us, let us experience your power and your provision and even your prosperity in all that we do as we seek you 
in the name of Jesus. Let the word get in our ears that we ring strong every day. Let the word get in our feet that we may walk strong in you. Let the word get in our hearts so that we may be strengthened in our inner man. Let the word get in our minds so that we can think about it all the time. Let the word, Lord, be in our eyes. Let it be before our eyes so that we can see it everywhere we go. And then, Lord, let the word get in our mouth so that we can declare it to a dying world. Encourage each other in you and encourage ourselves by your power. It is in Jesus' name. We love you and we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, St. Peter. Phone line.